So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this picture frame from start to finish, including how I cut out the glass and how to mount it. Hello there, and welcome back to Doing It With Jason. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this picture frame. It's a really easy woodworking project and perfect for a beginner. Now, this picture frame actually looks like metal, which is pretty cool, but it's just wood. I use this new paint that I got in and it works phenomenal. Okay, so quick note about this art. This art is from Blake Lorat. He's a stencil artist from Europe and he came to Chicago for a day and I've got to film him and hang out with him and just document the journey and it was a lot of fun. You can catch that video down below in the description or at the end of the video, I'll have it linked. So now let's start cutting out the frame. Okay, so now what I'm doing right here is I'm lowering my blade on my table saw and I'm cutting away about half inch and this is three quarter material, so about half inch leaving a quarter of an inch and that gives it enough room that I can put my glass set in and my artwork. So after I run each one of these boards once, what I'm gonna do is move the fence about the thickness of the blade over and then run it again and that's gonna give me a nice little groove that the artwork and glass will sit in perfectly. Okay, so now before we move to the chop saw to get our 45s like you can see here, what we're gonna be looking to do is cutting this material upside down or face down. So we're gonna be looking at this part right here. After you cut the first 45 on your saw, you're gonna measure from there to there on your picture frame molding. It's really important that you're on the upper part of this step and not in the front of it. So that being said, we're gonna go from here to exactly here for our measurement. Now let's get cutting. Okay, so what I did was I set my chop saw up for my first cut and I put it at a 45 degree angle. I have the material face up at this point because it doesn't really matter to be face down until the next cut. So now I flip it over face down and mark my length. This is gonna be the size of my picture or whatever material I'm framing. And then I usually add about an eighth of an inch for play. Since we're using the step and where we're cutting is going to be hidden and have material hiding it, it's no big deal if you're a little big. Being a little small, you never want to be small. So now an easy way to make repetitious cuts and make the other sides identical is to line up your two pieces and make a mark right there. And that will save you a lot of time and headaches and trouble of getting the exact same measurement. So line it up to the table, put it on there and follow that mark and cut that last 45 done. And now we're ready to glue it up. The easiest way to glue this thing is using the tape method and glue. If you've heard the saying, glue is sometimes stronger than the wood, very true. So the glue by itself with no fasteners, no nails, no anything else, no screws, it's gonna hold together plenty, plenty for this picture frame. Mirror's not that heavy. Cardboard is definitely not that heavy. Glue is super strong. And we're gonna pick the two sides. So our picture frame, we're gonna have the two sides. We're gonna be gluing those up, but we're gonna to wanna to put some tape on those because that's what's actually gonna clamp it down and hold everything together until the glue dries. So the best way of doing that is one of the ways. There's not a best way or a worst way. It's just put some tape on the miter on the edge where it's gonna be coming together. Now, what I'm gonna do is just add some glue to these pieces. And I'm only gonna glue and put glue on the smaller pieces. Feel free if you really want to, you can put a little glue on the other ones, but this will be definitely sufficient for this project. And I'm using a Type On 3, uh, which is by far one of my favorite glues. The open time, how long you have to work with it is nice. It's not too quick like some glues. So all you have to do is put these pieces pretty close together. What helps is having the edge of the table work to your advantage. So we're gonna do one at a time. We'll glue that up and we're working face down uh, just because it's easier. You can do it either which way. And now we're just gonna wrap the tape around once we get our miters pretty darn close. And you're just gonna fold that tape over on both sides. So there's one, as you can see, right there. All right, so now the tape is all set up. 
and all of our miters are lined up pretty well, we're gonna go ahead and ratchet this. But here is a little ratchet type band clamp, strap clamp, whatever you wanna call it. I got the link down below. All right, so we're just gonna put this strap all the way around all of the corners, tighten her up, bring it towards the middle. I like being in the middle a little bit and then realizing you're spun around somewhere, but that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna tighten this thing up. This one's a 7 16th size, and all it's doing right now is putting the force, clamping all those glue joints nice, check out your joints and make sure everything is lined up somewhat nice. It'll save you from having to sand a lot later. And then continue tightening. And I think I loosened it up there. I'm gonna keep hitting this button. And there we go. Easy as that. Now this right here is gonna just sit there, let the glue dry, hold everything nice and squished together. And yeah, after the glue dries in about a couple hours, we'll take it off, lightly sand there, and we're gonna be ready to paint this sucker and make it look awesome and frame up our picture. So now cutting glass, it's nothing to be afraid of. Set it on a nice level flat surface. And I'm gonna mark, what was it? 27 and 1 8 was our glass size, I believe. So we're gonna get that measurement, hold that there, and then use these really inexpensive, I think it was like three bucks for a little glass cutter. The thing is you mainly just want to just run it one time. So, you know, running it once, running it more than once, doesn't really work as well, I've noticed. So yeah, we're just gonna line it up here, keep nice firm pressure with our little straight edge and push down. And you'll start hearing it cracking. So now I'm gonna take a little piece of, so now I just found a little piece of scrap wood. What I'm gonna do is be real careful, hold your glass up, and we're gonna put that piece of scrap wood, kind of a place to teeter-totter it and break it. So I'm gonna put it right along my seam and just give it a little bit of a push. Now this new Dixie Bell paint that I got, Moonshine Metallics, this is Silver Bullet. I also have Moonshine Metallics Steel Magnolia. As you can see, very, very cool colors. We're gonna go with just the straight up silver bullet because it looks really neat. Now the directions say, ensure piece is clean, dirt and grime free. Two to three coats will produce an opaqueness with shine or apply over a similar color of paint. So what I'm guessing is if we had some silver paint, we could put that down or any kind of like grayish color and then this would go kind of almost like a glaze on top. But we're gonna try it directly over the white all right, so we're just using a chip brush. Uh, the link down below for the paint, everything is down there if you guys are interested. It's very liquidy and, uh, oh, that's awesome. So we're gonna do the two or three coats directly on the, th these are just prime pieces of lumber like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. But we're gonna go ahead and put, you know, three light coats on this and see how it looks. All right, so we're gonna let that first coat dry. Wow, that is really neat. Uh, we'll come back and do a few more coats. All right, we are ready for the finale coat here. We went ahead and did three on here, and man, it is coming out remarkably. It has such a really good metallic vibe to this paint. Um, Honestly, it looks like it is some kind of aluminum or metal frame. Definitely recommend this for your project. If you're going for that metal look, then look no further. This is awesome. This is basically like liquid metal that I'm just putting on the piece. So let's let this dry and then put in some artwork and see how it looks. All right, so next we are going to set this face down on our table and assemble our artwork into our piece. Let me grab the glass. All right, we're gonna set our glass in now. Nice fit. And I'm gonna clean the inside of the glass because this is the last chance I'm gonna get with it. Unless I open it back up, not a big deal. But I did a little Windexing on it to get it a little cleaner. Go ahead and take your lovely one-of-a-kind artwork and stick it in there and now for the back 
super easy. They sell these little things, I think at Michael's or whatnot. Uh, I have a link down below of where to get them on Amazon in case you're like me and it's like when you go to Michael's and there's just so many things to look at and you're like, I can't find anything. Uh, I got a link on that. So these are offset. So it's really cool. Uh, man, that metallic paint is, I mean, look at it on my fingers. It is like super metallic. It's almost like there's metallic dust in the paint. Really, I mean, you will not be disappointed with this stuff. So we'll just put that there, screw it into the piece of wood and it will push down and keep nice pressure on your piece and keep it in there. That's the way these are designed with that offset. And you can get different kinds of offsets, uh, whatever's gonna work best for your project and how you're doing it. Which way does it go? There we go. That's the offset I wanna get. And then, so we're just gonna put those on all four sides. to keep the artwork from moving around. And the nice part is it doesn't damage the artwork. And then we're gonna grab these little, the same company, OOK, whatever that is. They make these little hooks to hang your piece. And let's just make sure that it's the right way. Yep, that's the upside. So we're gonna put this here to hang it. And you can grab a tape measure and kind of center it out a little bit. This helps you. They're made to be off-centered or whatever. You don't have to have them centered, but it helps. 14 inches to that. 14, oh, that's right on the money, and I didn't even pre-measure. So that will do us fine. We'll put it a little lower. Well, I don't know about you, but I am super impressed with this paint, how easy it was to make a picture frame. If you have any questions, please feel free. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, share it, tell your friends.